Girlfriend said I was guilt tripping her when I said I felt like our relationship wasn't equal. I live with my partner and some things have started to annoy me. For example if we're watching TV she'll refuse any suggestion I have and then as soon as she has a suggestion she just pretty much says it's that show or nothing. I have an office and before we moved into this apartment we agreed the office is mine and I will be the one to clean it etc and my GF will leave it alone yet she goes in, moves things on the desk to tidy it etc. Tonight I went to sit on the sofa and my GF comes over and get annoyed and say she was going to sit at that part of the sofa and asks me to move. I can't be bothered to argue so I move and get comfortable at the other end of the sofa and then she said she wants to lay down and rest her head on my lap so asks me to move how I'm sat. I tell her I'm comfortable as I am and don't really want to move. I go to switch the PS5 on and she immediately says she was going to put Netflix on. I get annoyed at this point and just say that there isn't just her who lives here. She asked what I meant by that and I just pointed out everything has to be how she wants it and she expect me to do exactly what she wants without any regard for what I want. She denied that and said it wasn't true and I just stated the examples I've given here and she said it wasn't like that. I just said it feels like everything has to be how she wants it and I'm just here for her and to make sure she gets what she wants as opposed to being an equal part of the relationship and she accused me of trying to guilt trip her and said I was being unreasonable. How would you handle this? TL, DR I told my GF that it's starting to feel like she doesn't consider what I want and that it's like everything has to be what she wants. She said I was guilt tripping her and denied things were how I said they were. How would you handle this? Comment. Out to her again about it but not when you are mad or annoyed already. If she doesn't listen then you might just have to move on and move out. But only way to fix this is to talk to her about it. I don't really see it as guilt tripping either because you didn't say anything to make her feel guilty you just pointed out facts, now if she feels guilty about what she's been doing that's a different story but you're not guilt tripping her. I think you did the right thing by expressing it to her. She got defensive which unfortunately most people do. Sounds like control is very important to her. But it does not sound fair. I would bring it up again, make sure not to say like you always want the control or things like that. Be good to say like I feel like I never get a say in things. I feel like if we don't do things your way then it's gonna be an issue. If she's still defensive just stick to what you feel and tell her you aren't okay with it. I doubt it will change after one conversation, but if you express how much it affects your happiness in the relationship, then she can make the choice to change some behaviors. Or she could choose not to. And then that's when you decide what you want to do. Next story too. My boyfriend cheated but I gave him a second chance but I still can't trust him and now he wants to break up. My boyfriend and I have been together for almost two months. During the first few weeks since we made things official between us, I caught him cheating. He had a phobia that he really liked before he met me. He even told me that he was waiting for that phobia of his to be single and he would court him, but then I came to his life. One night we had an argument because I went out drinking with my friends without telling him. He was also with his friends that night. He asked no, begged me to come home immediately or else he won't come home. So I did. When he got home, he was drunk. He cried because I hurt his feelings for not telling him about me going out with my friends. I apologized and we made up. He fell asleep and I had this gut feeling that I should check his phone. At first I didn't, but something really urged me to snoop around his phone, I know it was wrong to do so but my curiosity got the better of me. I opened his messaging apps and there I saw that he sent a message to his phobia. He said he misses him and that he wants to stay over at his place. His phobia wasn't available that time so it didn't push through, but had his phobia been available that time, something would have happened for sure. The next morning I confronted him about it. He just kept quiet. I asked him if there's something I'm lacking at, if his phobia has something that I don't have, or whether I am enough for him. He didn't respond to those questions and just told me he's sorry and that was it. So after that, I've been paranoid. 
though he's reassured me that he had completely cut all ties with his fubu, I still can't help but feel like he's lying. He's given me free access to his phone after that incident to reassure me, but the doubt is still there. I know that I could never trust him completely again. To reassure me, whenever we're not together, he makes sure to keep me updated of his whereabouts and what he's currently doing. We're on video call almost all hours of the day, it only ends when one of us has to go to the toilet or go to sleep. We are also constantly seeing each other on our days off. I've been okay with the setup up until a while ago. He told me he'll go play volleyball at a court near his place. I've never not allowed him to play. He would always give me an update if they're taking a break, or if the game has ended and he's on his way home but that wasn't the case earlier. He only told me that he got home only after I messaged him and called him, to which he didn't answer. So I called him out for that, and he's saying I'm making a big deal out of nothing. I told him that I am sensitive to small changes in the way he talks or treats me. I told him he used to always give me an update about everything, but he didn't earlier, so I asked him what changed. We had a heated argument after that and he told me that the reason why I'm being like this is because I haven't moved on yet from that previous incident about him messaging his fubu. He told me he's getting tired and fed up, that he's done everything to reassure me that I'm the only one and yet I still can't trust him. So now he told me that maybe he's not the right person to love me, because he's getting tired of reassuring me. But can you blame me, dear reader? He told me he's sorry for making me feel like this, and that we should let each other go. He doesn't want me to get her any further so he said we should break up. I refused. I know I still love him, I want to still be in a relationship with him. We really don't have any problem whenever we're together physically, issues just arise whenever we're not together because I'm scared that he might be cheating on me. The reason why I got paranoid when he didn't give me an update when their game was finished because, as I have stated, he's given me free access to his phone and there were playmates of his that would send him flirty messages. That's why I sorta went nuts when he didn't give me an update like he always does. Is there a way for to get past what he did? Technically nothing happened, but it's really the part where he said I miss you to his fubu that makes me go into a spiral. I know he loves me, but what right does he have to get tired of fixing what he broke, my trust? Comment. You are right to have trust issues with him. If I were in your shoes, I wouldn't give him another chance. But that's just me. I feel you deserve more respect than that. Trust takes time to build, but even more time to rebuild because you were vulnerable with someone and they betrayed it. If he's unwilling to give you the time you need to rebuild it, it's time to move on. Leave. Absolutely not worth it. Next story 3. My boyfriend, M26, and I, F24, are two different in terms of family background, intelligence, and interests. Should I break up with him or should I try making this work? My boyfriend is a very nice, pure-hearted, attentive, and affectionate person. I admired him for his high EQ, positive mindset, and insane amount of energy. I'm happy most of the time I'm with him, I feel connected because we're both bilingual and have bubbly personality. He also a very diligent, working full-time in retail and part-time as a photographer. He would help me with house chores whenever he can, help me run my errands and drive all the time, I'm a passenger princess who scares of cars and speed. However, he dropped out of college, has quite a bit of debts, credit card, car loan, uni tuition, doesn't have savings, living with his mom to save on rent and not yet figured out which career he wanna pursue. He came from a poor, uneducated family, has a mother with schizophrenia, and possibly bipolar, who throws tantrum randomly, refused to go to therapy and is extremely traditional and toxic, the type to think women should serve men. I understood that it's a mental illness and not to take her insults too personally during her episodes. Despite this, I still feel upset and don't think I deserve it. I feel uncomfortable at my BF's place because I have to be careful with everything I do so one don't trigger her. 
In contrast, I grew up in a wealthy and educated family, mother is a CEO and dad is a lawyer, graduated from a prestigious university with a science degree and currently working on my master. I live by myself in a fairly nice apartment, has a part-time job and love to cook and clean. I have savings and a few real estates, from parents, under my name. However, I didn't have it easy. I was bullied in high school, for being ugly back then, neglected by my dad, after divorce at 5 yo. I was left alone at home a lot with a housekeeper, because mother was busy starting up her business. At 15, I left the country to escape toxic school environment and my typical toxic Asian mom. I studied hard, got into the top one university, stopped blaming my parents for my mental health issues, tried to fix my insecurities and recovered from my depression. Therefore, I have high expectations for people and can be too harsh to myself and to others. I still look down on people who use their personal hardships as excuses for not being successful in life. Recently, my partner's trying to find a new job with better pay, so I try to come up with jobs that he might like. After getting rejected so many times before getting an interview, he finally got into a final interview round for a job I recommended and that he actually likes. Despite having connections, he still failed. I found out he didn't prepare for the interview at all and answered to questions too honestly that exposed a major weakness related to the position. Instead of comforting him, I couldn't hold back and said you're being too honest, you should have prepared that basic question. I apologized for being harsh after realizing how crude I was and seeing how upset he was. I feel bad for being straightforward, but at the same time, disappointed how he couldn't learn from past mistakes. I love him dearly and we're happy every time we see each other. Since we started dating, he has improved on his spending and tried to spend time with me despite working two jobs. But there are obvious gaps in our intelligence, life skills, financial situations, and interests. It's frustrating to talk to him about any topics, even something like food, I'm a footy, because he refused to care about anything he doesn't know much about or interested in. I genuinely want this to work out because of how much he has done for me and lead a peaceful life with him despite our differences. I also understand relationships are never perfect but I'm not sure I deserve all these cons after trying so hard to grow as a person myself. What should I do? Comment. He sounds like a great guy, working 1.5 jobs and doing his best. You need to know that he will never be as successful as you even if he was mega intelligent and extremely hard working. You were extremely fortunate to get those properties from your parents and presumably a paid for education by them also. It would take someone on an average wage a very long time to reach the same level of wealth. You need to accept that he will never be successful in your eyes. But he will clearly make you happy. What do you value more? It is your call to make. Can you be happy as the primary breadwinner and that it's likely never to change? Think of the life you want to build. How does he fit into that? Have you asked him his vision for the future? Do they match? Is he realistic? Being nice is important but is he ambitious enough for you to rely upon him? Or will you slowly resent him? How would future children be handled? Things to discuss.